What's up, everyone? I hope you guys had an amazing day. Let's just make this nice, short, and simple. Let's get started with the video. So basically, we went short the market, right? We ended up closing out our shorts, and then we started scaling into some December longs on Microsoft and Amazon. And the reason for that is because we could clearly see a lot of weakness in the market, but it feels still very, very weak. It still feels like we can still fall a bit lower. Uh, the setup here on the SPY is clearly not, it's not really a reversal signal. It'll take a lot of buying pressure for us to even gap up or to continue moving upwards. So I think we might be a day or two early. Um, overall, with this momentum, it does feel like we can easily see 363 to 365 tomorrow on the SPY. Uh, it's quite clearly like you could clearly feel the weakness out of the market. Um, you could also see that we're trading at the 50% FIB from uh, the recent lows to the most recent high. So that is really like the most important thing at the moment. Once we break down below this 50% FIB, which is most likely going to end up happening. Honestly, I would essentially I would be shocked to see us uh, rally up from here. But um, yeah, it is what it is. We started um, scaling into calls a bit early. Let's see if that is the case. Uh, when you take a look at the Nasdaq, <clears throat> obviously this situation looks very, very similar to what happened in June, right? How we're just completely falling and showing a lot of weakness. But if we do have another, maybe Friday and then Monday we show some more weakness, then we can maybe get into some calls then. But for now, uh, things do continue to look a bit weak. The uh, MACD is very, very oversold on the NASDAQ. And we're basically back to this 260 level where we were before. And uh, yeah, from here, it's just going to be heavily dependent on the SPY and also the IWM. So the IWM is maintaining support at the 20 um, EMA. You can see that it's still outperforming very clearly the NASDAQ and everything else. But we closed out of our puts early in the morning. Uh, we did phenomenally on them, but this still does not seem like a, a strong reversal signal. The IWM is showing the most strength in terms, I mean, it's showing way more strength than the NASDAQ. So this can begin moving upwards, but it's still really, really um, risky. So this is the main reason why I essentially wanted to go long on amazon and uh, the large tech stocks so number one you can see that amazon is clearly clearly very overextended to the downside on the bollinger bands so it was a bit of a safe longer term position where we got into december mid-december calls so i'm expecting us to get a bit of a bounce here because this is very very overextended to the downside but the one caveat is this is primarily caused this, this move to the downside was primarily caused by, number one, the fact that they're having bad earnings and bad guidance for the end of the year. And number two, uh, Fed Powell remains hawkish, right? So I am basically like, it makes sense to try to scale into longs here. Um, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. That's life. Number two, Microsoft, similar situation to uh amazon and i like trading microsoft to the upside we've uh, made money on microsoft uh swings plenty of times before so there's that the other thing is that google is also very overextended to the downside i wanted to go long on google but um pelosi closed out her calls a few weeks ago on google prior to the earnings and i think she held 2024 or 2025 calls on google she bought them in a month ago actually so the fact that she sold them means that there's a bit more room to the downside but to see, my point is that to see all of these large trillion dollar companies very very algorithmically overextended to the downside is grounds for a potential bounce to the upside and that is essentially my thought process for getting into something in december yes we shorted the iwm yes if you guys were still holding on to the spy puts those worked out phenomenally but now is like early on in the morning i was basically saying that now's the time to start scaling into longer term calls or to get lotto puts so we're getting into longer term calls because this is a lot of overextension to the downside that we can see 
uh, we are continuing to see a lot of strength out of the dollar. So obviously when the dollar is showing this much strength and closing above major levels of resistance and showing strength, it is bad for the stock market, right? But the other interesting thing is the bonds had lows and then as soon as the morning began, the bonds started to move up slightly, right? And they were showing a lot of bullishness. So prior to 10 a.m., <clears throat> Prior to 10 a.m., the bonds began to show a lot of strength, and that was a good sign that the news that came out at 10 a.m. was going to be uh, basically caused the market to show some strength intraday. But it's a good sign, essentially, that the bonds wicked below these levels of support, and now we have to see if the bonds can continue upwards. The other interesting thing is the VIX is actually falling lower, right? So back in June, when we were basically capitulating and showing a lot of weakness, the VIX was shooting up right here, right? So you can see that the VIX, June 9th, 10th, and 11th, you know, we were skyrocketing here on the VIX. But, you know, so similarly, we fell very, very sharply uh, on the SPY, but we are not really translate. That's not translating into the VIX. So over here, when... We on the spy when we were showing a lot of weakness the vix was shooting up but you know we're similarly showing a lot of weakness but yet the vix is actually falling in volatility so um it's a lot of interesting stuff going on essentially so we have to basically see if the market is trying to even itself out of course i was also showing that the lower bollinger bands are falling lower so this falling and breaking down below support on the vix can lead to more volatility uh basically the vix falling lower and if the vix continues to fall lower that should be bullish for the stock market but seeing as the dollar is skyrocketing and uh seeing the just heaviness out of the equities market it is starting to get a bit interesting so it's tough to say exactly what's going to happen overall um we should just play how the bonds and the dollar are essentially moving. The bonds are basically like they wicked below support and they came back up to support and closed above it. But the dollar is showing a lot of strength. So now we basically just need to see if the dollar can continue to show this strength. Of course, I was showing how there would be at least two days of as the MACD on the dollar crossed above, there would be at least two days where we continue to move upwards. So we crossed above over here. This is the two days. So now let's see if we can continue moving upwards. Um, if the dollar starts to fall tomorrow, then that should be very, very good for the stock market. We should get a retest of 373 to 374 on the SPY. And in my opinion, it would make the most sense for the tech stocks to get a bit of a bounce. But of course, that's not really guaranteed. The other thing that we also have to take into consideration is that next Tuesday we have elections. So if, in my opinion, if the Republicans start doing really, really well in the midterm elections, then growth stocks should do well. Um, but, you know, of course, let's see how that turns out. Not 100% guarantee. But a lot of uh, it should be pretty fun to see what happens in the market over the next few weeks. This is historic times. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have to take this one day at a time. Pretty fun nonetheless. Hope you guys had an amazing day. I'll see you guys tomorrow, bright and early, to end the week. Thank you, and have a good one.